Hey, Tim Frisch with a Frisch Perspective here, bringing you analysis, reviews, and fun from a Christian nerd's point of view. Today I'm going to be talking about our culture in light of the recent Supreme Court decisions about employment discrimination in relation to the LGBT community, and uh, just talking about how we as Christians in general relate to our cultural situation. So a lot of you might have heard that the Supreme Court a few days ago uh, ruled in a way that was really in favor of the LGBT community concerning job discrimination and that there can be no discrimination of employment for those who identify themselves in the LGBT community. Um, at least that's the best I understand the situation. And it just got me thinking about how our law works and our cultural situation that we're in right now. This is yet another thing. Uh, that can really add to just the, the, the turmoil and unsettling nature of the culture that we're in right now. And obviously we're, we're always facing these kinds of situations, but it just seems like this year is one of those years where uh, there's a lot of uh, tumultuous type things going on in the culture, and we're, we're feeling that as Christians. And uh, so this just got me thinking about uh, this particular situation in our culture right now, and about how culture changes and it really made me think about this idea of normalization and what do we even consider normal um, and one of the things that was brought up in one of the cases before the supreme court uh, was was a man who worked at a funeral home a biological male who uh, wanted to be able to dress the way he felt he felt that he was a woman and so he wanted to be able to dress that way but the funeral home uh, had strict policies about uh, the way that you dress uh, according to your gender. And I was reading an article about that and they were talking about gender stereotypes and the way that our culture views the way men and women should be and the way they should dress. And so, you know, that was kind of a obvious normal thing years ago that men should dress a certain way, women should dress a certain way. But that is definitely changing. And so this particular case shows that, that now there's a question there. Does a man have to dress uh, in a certain way? Does a woman have to dress in a certain way? Especially if they feel that they're the opposite gender. And so wh what I want to say about this is when we think about th things being normalized, when things are normalized, really they become acceptable to us because it's just something we see as part of our culture. And so what's interesting is that the law, and we see this in the Supreme Court case, is actually used to come down on discrimination. That's a key word here, discrimination. And uh, what happens is by using this idea of discrimination, it really allows us to reinforce new norms uh, because then if we say, well, you can't discriminate in this way, and if you do, the law is going to come down against you, then that creates new norms. It creates a new way of operating, and that becomes the way we just think this is acceptable, this is normal. And that reinforces a change in the culture. Once things become normalized, it reinforces change. Now, I have to say here, because I, I do think a lot of us, and if we're Christians, uh, we might be more prone to think this way, that the culture changes because of the law. And I would put it in a more nuanced way. I would say that what happens is culture begins to change. You actually have underlying factors that begin to change the culture. And then that leads to a change of law, which reinforces and solidifies the change in the culture. And that's more of what I think we see. And now that's historically been true in our country, and sometimes in very good ways. Uh, so it's it's not always a bad thing and obviously depending on your perspective you would see some cultural changes as being good or not good but the point is that there are cultural changes that take place and then that affects how we uh, view and enforce law and the laws that we create even Supreme Court decisions and then the law and the way that the law is applied ultimately reinforces uh, certain norms and and that reinforces the change in culture. So I think that's what you're seeing right now. And uh, I, I do want to say too that we have a cultural outlook ourself uh, and it's, it's so hidden, you know, it's just part of us. And we all have a cultural outlook, but our cultural outlook really influences how we perceive things. 
And I know this is a really unsettling time for a lot of people. And just uh, yesterday I heard about uh, this situation with uh, syrup of all things, right? The syrup brand, it says in this article, is going to change their name, uh, remove the image that Quaker says is based on a racial stereotype. The article says, the Aunt Jemima brand of syrup and pancake mix will get a new name and image, Quaker Oats announced Wednesday, saying the company recognizes that Aunt Jemima's origins are based on a racial stereotype. The 130-year-old brand features a black woman named Aunt Jemima who was originally dressed as a minstrel character. The picture has changed over time, and in recent years, Quaker removed the Mammy kerchief from the character to blunt growing criticism that the brand perpetuated a racist stereotype that dated to the days of slavery. Quaker, a subsidiary of PepsiCo, said removing the image and name is part of an effort by the company to make progress toward racial equality. We recognize Aunt Jemima's origins are based on a racial stereotype so you can see in that article there that there, this is just yet another way in which culture is changing how it perceives things. I think that's really what's at play here. And some people react strongly to this, like why are they changing this brand that's been around for I think 130 years it said. Uh, you know, it seems weird, but it's because our cultural perceptions have changed. So if you grew up in a certain time and you're used to certain things, you look at Aunt Jemima syrup and you think, so what? Uh, but other people look at that and they say that's a that's just a racial stereotype and they see it very differently and it shows you that our culture is changing by the way i'm just giving cultural commentary as you can tell i'm not necessarily giving an opinion on this i'm just trying to explain how this operates and how people look at things but america is definitely facing cultural changes and with that come those clashes as culture changes. And that's more what we have to th really think about are the clashes that our culture is facing and how do we look at that, how do we deal with that as Christians. And here's what I basically want to say in all of this. Um, it's not really to say, okay, here's the exact side of culture or here's how our culture needs to go. It's actually to say this, that Christians themselves have to be a culture that transcends the categories of our culture. I think that's really important. In Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 2, where Paul says, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. A lot of us know that verse and believe that verse. We as Christians are to be renewed in our mind, and we're to discern what God's will is and to live that way. Uh, but, you know, when he says don't be conformed to this age, don't be conformed to this world, we tend to think, okay, that applies to this part of the world. Uh, but then what we don't realize is that can really apply to a lot of things in our culture on different sides. We, we actually have to have a view and an outlook that transcends the categories of our culture, whatever they may be. And so I'm not really trying to say this is exactly how you need to apply this, but it's something for all of us to think about, whatever political viewpoint that you have, that really as Christians we have to transcend that. We have to know uh, what is God's perfect will. And let's face it, there have always been elements in our culture, what, whatever side you look at things, that don't perfectly align with God's outlook and will. And so we have to take a look at that and always examine wherever we're at on the different sides of culture within the American culture, wherever we're at politically, we have to examine that and say, okay, what does the scripture actually say? What, what is Jesus actually teaching? And what I find is that the categories of our culture, left and right, conservative, liberal, Democrat, Republican, and whatever else you want to throw in there, don't really fully fit the categories that God gives us and Jesus gives us in the scripture. And so I have to kind of come back to that all the time and let it guide me so that I won't be conformed. And you know, the culture wars, they're important in their own way, but ultimately we're citizens of heaven, children of God if we're Christians. And so that really needs to be guiding the way that we operate in this world. Hopefully what we can do as Christians is have a culture that really reflects the values of Christ and then we can approach these cultural issues that we live in the best that we can. But let's face it, 
America and whatever country you're in is never going to fully reflect the values of Christ because that's really embodied in his people and his church, not in a country. So that's something to think about. But we do pray for living in a peaceful place. We do pray that we will continue to have the blessing of religious freedom. I certainly advocate for those things. But I think what this situation shows you is that our culture is definitely changing. And uh, I just wanted to make the point that as we face these changes, it can be overwhelming. It can be angering to some people. But ultimately, we have to look at this through the lens of how does God want me to live as a Christian? And I have to actually transcend the culture wars and the outlooks that are being presented to me. And I have to look at this in a very unique way the way that Jesus shows me, the way that God shows me in his word. And I hope that will help us to be a light, help us to be a good influence, and hopefully help us to operate wisely in a culture that is filled with clashing and a lot of changes right now. So those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think. I know it's an interesting time that we're living in, and I hope that something I've said has maybe been an encouragement to you. Thank you, as always, for listening to what I have to say from a first perspective.